Ah, uh, it was a great day. Had the grandkids over, had a nice thunderstorm. And Beth is now working the barn still. Reminds me of my great Uncle Drookie. Used to call him A. Uncle Druckemiller out on 419. He was a pig farmer. He and my great grandfather were the last to contract trichinosis. But today they've cleaned the pork a little up so uh, you don't cook it rare, but you at least cook it pink. And now back to our regular programming. Live from Pine Top, Arizona, it's That Painting Show, starring the Color Queen. Stay tuned. Today we're going to be working on our barn painting again. Geez, you know, you look like you should be on FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> ah. I know, I was trying to get a character for my barn painting, looking like a little country bumpkin here. Anyway, it just keeps us laughing. I know I look ridiculous, I don't care. So, since we were together last, I started Put to sketch in the lower parts of the barn where the windows and doors are and I used a chalk pencil and that's what all of this is. But before I get into painting, Captain John, who is today's lucky duck? The lucky duck is Carol from Tucson. Woo, Carol! Carol from Tucson, my friend. How are you? Uh, she said, how do you sign your paintings? Well, that's a good question. I like to sign my paintings with a Sharpie. I like my signature is all block letters, all capital letters. And I like to sign it in the lower left or the lower right side of my painting. And I sign it with a Sharpie first, which is a more natural signature. And then I can go over it with a liner brush and some paint and actually go over my own signature in a different color if I'd like to. So. That's, um, that's a really easy way of doing it. Some people sign in paint all the time, but I like to get my signature in a more natural stroke first and then go over it with the paint. Now, this barn is looking pretty good, but we do need to finish up this detail down here. So I'm going to take a, a small brush and a little bit of raw umber dark paint to make kind of a tan color. You see this tan color right here? I'm gonna put that on first. It looks like, when I look up close at it, it looks like it might be like natural stone. Maybe limestone or something, because this barn is from the Midwest. But stone foundation underneath the barn. And then there's this little side building over here too, which probably stores other stuff. As a child growing back up back in Rhode Island, we didn't have a farm, but um, our next door neighbors did. And I remember how entertaining I found it to go over and look under the chickens for eggs and pick vegetables and all that, which was fun for me because I didn't have to do it. But it wasn't so much fun for them. Farming is hard business, hard work. Okay, I think I have all that in now. So that is the stone. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the windows. The windows and doors just are in all shadow, all in shadow, so I'm just going to put them in in black. Here I have a couple windows over here too. Openings. You know, this is really far away, so you don't have to get too concerned about the actual detail, but you want to make sure that your shapes are geometrical. You know, these are squares and rectangles. I'm using a little tiny brush. A lot of people say, how 
which brush do you use? And I said, just use the largest one you can for the job of painting, whatever you're painting. And you'll know if it's not the right brush because all of a sudden it'll get really hard to use it. I'm gonna come back off at, over here too and get these boards under this part of the foundation. Starting to get the definition of this structure. And the more I looked at this photograph, the more I realized that this is a big barn door. They have it closed. I decided to make it open. Remember, artistic license. You're using the photograph for a reference. But if you decide you want to have the barn door open, which would all be in shadow, just go ahead and open it up just like that, like we did over here on this barn back here. Okay. Looking marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. Captain John, didn't you say we had an email question? You're exactly right. We had an email requesting that you demonstrate the cloud trick again. Okay. Well, you know, as you can see, this is the Midwest. They don't have those great, big, puffy, wonderful clouds we have uh, back out here in Arizona. But there's a little bit of cloudiness in here. I'm going to show you the cloud trick using the barn itself. And we're going to put it above the barn. Well, the barn's already painted in, so it's like, well, how do you get up close to the barn without messing up the roof line? This is the trick. Take some masking tape and tape right along the edge of any structure that you're going to paint up to. Make sure we get that in front of the barn. And I'm going to, because I'm going to bring my clouds up to every one of these little places I'm taping over. Maybe I'll even put a little cloud the end of the barn here. Masking tape, green tape, blue tape, any of that kind of tape works. And I'm going to follow the contour here. All right. Now I'm going to take, do what they call a dry brush technique. I have a very dry brush. This one's kind of stiff. Uh, and I'm going to put just the tiniest bit of paint on it. You can see I'm not dousing my brush in the paint, just a little bit of paint. And I'm going to press that down with my thumbnail, make sure that tape is really tight. Then I'm going to paint away from it. Actually, sometimes it's even easier. Stay. To turn it upside down and paint away from the tape. Because you're painting away from the tape like this just to get along that line. Just a little bit of paint, a little bit of paint at a time. But I'm not gonna go up into the tape, I'm gonna go away from the tape. Now I'm gonna do my little tight circular strokes that I showed you in the cloud trick. Kind of using the side of the brush. This is a filbert brush. Filbert flat bright. They're, they're all broad brushes. Let's say I'm just going to take that paint and I'm going to feather it away until I kind of run out of paint. It's kind of like the wind has taken the moisture. You want to make sure you don't stay in one spot. Let it run. Let the, let the wind take the away. Stretch them out across the sky. I got a little color in that, a little bit of that um, raw umber dark that I was using. Actually, I kind of like it. You know, clouds aren't exactly per perfectly white. They have a little bit of color in them, especially on the low sides. The highlights, the sun's coming from above, so the clouds are usually whiter at the top and a little fuller, a little 
whiter in the center where there's more moisture, it's more dense. I'm painting upside down, so I have no idea what this is going to look like. How does it look, Captain John? Marvelous. Okay. Looking, looking good. The important thing is not to have your clouds look too symmetrical or um, too much like, you don't want them to ever look like somebody or something, a dragon or a frog or whatever. You don't want to have your clouds remind you of something so much that when you look at the painting, you go, oh, that cloud looks like a dragon. Okay, turn it upside down. Wow. You know, I, put, I have them so heavy right there. I think I really should um, add a couple over here. I'm not gonna take the time to take this off. I'll come in a little bit tight right here. But if you got that many there, you should have a few over here. Just reminiscent of whatever, if this is an impending storm or whatever. I don't know if the paint's quite dry enough yet, but I'm gonna give it a try. Paint, acrylic paint dries really quickly, as you know. Too quickly for some people. How you tell if it's dry? It will get dull. If it's shiny, it's wet. Like when I came right back here, true, that's all really shiny. What I did at first looks pretty dry. Pull the tape off. I take it off a band-aid <laughs> it makes a nice crisp edge so now you don't have to worry about painting around your barn you just put the tape up to it and off you go and that's true for every every uh building or object you'd be using so or excuse me painting so i think that's about as much time as we have today but um captain john did you have a question you know, I do, and I kept looking at those beautiful paintings behind you. Are those your new ones? They are, as a matter of fact. I have been painting this summer, this spring. Uh, these are a couple of little botanicals I've done. They're 18 inches by 14 inches wide. Perfect for a small space. Um, this one's called, I always get crazy with my names. This one's called Wicked Red and just rocking so those are my new paintings i wanted to showcase them for you now it's time for our pearls of wisdom and uh grandma fleming's old pearls i think they're grandma fleming's grandma fleming grandma angel one of them anyway this uh quote is uh it's a funny one and it's not attributed to anyone in particular but it says my definition of an intellectual person is someone who can listen to the william tell overture without thinking of the lone ranger <laughs> okay i got a kick out of that one anyway thanks again for joining us be safe be well cheers bye-bye <laughs>